if the goal of the pre-round is kind of set yourself up for a plan and hit weak side, I think the mid-round is adapting so that you can decide to rotate and push. As attackers, we don't actually know where their setup is until we actually play the round out. So maybe our pre-round is we think that there's three A side, but we don't actually know. So we're doing a default. So let's say as attackers, you kind of work up mid and then you see the KO, maybe he knives cat. And then there's a one-way A main and then we get contact on the jet here. Boom, you know it, that's three A off of this info. So the mid round call would be cancel A and try to go back to B to run into the two players B site. All right, so just as a brief introduction for those of you that aren't familiar with this, it's kind of like we're doing a series of cover Valorant fundamentals, things that I wish I knew when I started Valorant. We did peaking before, we did aim after, and now we are on to the game sense. So now we're talking about game sense as a whole. So what is game sense, you know? I think a lot of people have different definitions for this, but I kind of summed it up into game knowledge, pattern recognition, and intuition. I think that kind of sums up what game sense is to me. You know, you have a lot of game knowledge when you play the game, and then you recognize patterns, and then you try to kind of make plays into intuitively off of stuff like that. To me, that's kind of like game sense. The goal for game sense is to use it to leverage to outsmart enemies, right? So in a sense, you can think of like game sense as a way to big brain your enemy. Um, and then I broke it down into macro, which is the why, and the micro, which is the how in terms of game sense. I have one clip that I guys want to show you guys. This is a very normal round, this clip, but I just want to play through the whole round and showcase what my thought process is through some of this, and we'll break it down later on in the PowerPoint. Starting in the pre-round, I want to make a pressure. This is a very normal round on T side. It's just very normal round, so I think it was the most applicable. So I'm starting A as Viper. I'm trying to make A pressure, right? That's that's kind of the idea. I just realized my camera was on double up. So that's the round. I made some A pressure. I got hit by the flash. I mollied, put up wall, put up orb, and then I go and regroup with my teammates, right? So this is like the pre-round aspect. Make some A pressure. Now it's kind of getting into the mid-round element a little bit. I'm like, okay, let me see what's happening. We have ropes control. That's awesome. Trying to work up B heaven. All right, we broke the trip ropes. I'm just waiting for my duelist to scale up. And then we get contact. Now we completely got shut on by a setup. Okay, so this is where the mid round really comes into play. We failed at taking B heaven. Now we're regrouping B main because I can't go and take mid late. Oh, I can take mid late, but I can't really force my way through mid solo because it smoked off. There's a nade, there's two people there, whatever. So I figure the best opportunity for me is just to regroup B main, right? So I'm telling them, try to go out B. Our omen thankfully kills the B anchor. Waiting for his flash. We're just fighting. Thankfully we trade one for one. Omen kills another. This guy's gotten huge so far, this omen. And now it's a 2v2, right? So now we're transitioning from the mid round into the late round, right? The post plant. And in the post plant, I'm kind of just thinking about how can I get a kill or stay alive and keep my omen alive while he plants. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about. I hear the sky dog, try to go for a peek. I know they separated, so I go for that kill. And then now I'm just playing a setup. Omen holds the run out. I get the kill. Right, so very normal round, very normal round. You can see how it's divided up from the pre-round to the mid-round to the late round, right? That's kind of a taste of what we're going into with the, the whole game sense thing. So pre-round as a whole, pre-rounding, you kind of just think about your plan. What's your plan into the round? You know, reading enemy habits or setups can help you identify weak and strong sides. So for example, you know, if you're there playing three on A and two on B on a map, you try to go to the site as two B. If you're playing offense, you want to try to change up the pace or switch things up you would switch from a default to a rush so let's say you defaulted one round and then you won the round or you lost the round and you want to change the pace then you just rush the next round or vice versa just so that they can't get a good read on you and then if you're on defense uh, the way you would be unpredictable is by changing quote-unquote lane assignments i'm using this term from league of legends but basically if your sentinel or your smokes player is playing c on haven you can switch your killjoy or whatever to play a on haven you may be able to play retake with the killjoy ult that's like kind of the most common one obviously you can change your op around and things like that and shift like what side you're playing playing the strong side on. That's also a part of the pre-round, just trying to think one step ahead. And then of course, playing off of ultimate. So I just mentioned the Killjoy ult, you can look at the scoreboard, you can look at ult points, see like what major ults they have and see how you can play around it. I have an example of a pre-round that I don't call, but my teammate calls. I wanted to show you guys. It's not about ults, but it was about their enemy tendencies. So I'll kind of walk you through this. Okay, so the call starts with the fade here. They have double self equipped, probably just do a split with them and blind. 
Um, can you yeah, go? I also fuck with making B ending A. Like, I'll take B main space with the cypher cam. I'll break the trip with my nade, and then we just like go A. Can we just uh, fuck these guys in market with an omen blind? We'll just split. Just avoid the trips entirely. Because they're both tunneling into market. And blind, just I like, need to drop. That's my top man, I guess. So you could see like because we have someone calling for strats specifically a pre-round I decide to say nothing right our fade has a plan Wuhujin has a separate plan fade then reiterates his plan He wants to force this market split. This is kind of like an example of the pre-round You can see this pre-round was stemmed off of their cypher playing double trips B main, right? So that means that their market setup isn't very good and you can force it with an omen blind, right? And more specifically, we don't want to run into B main into the trips This is just an idea of a pre-round and then the rest of the round plays out then we we win the round right and i'll go back into this clip in the future to kind of talk about micro but that's just an example of the pre-round okay so let's kind of explain a default real quick which will play into the bit of the pre-round and then also set yourself up in the mid-round right so when you call a default in the pre-round you're trying to figure out what's happening on the map so a really generic strong default is is something like a 131 which on this map would be controller or sentinel on one of the wings a and c side and then you have three towards mid which normally is like your initiator your duelist and then your flex which is right now right so this is the most common 131 the goal on this 131 is to get mid control establish mid presence and ideally break sentinel util like there's a tripwire here or alarm bot here something like that right so that's the goal of a 131 you're just figuring out what's happening on the map what the defense setup is maybe you get a kill from the a push or the c push but realistically the goal is just to burn util and figure out their setup that's one example of a default another example of a default is where your sentinel holds mid space and everyone else goes and takes a space and your sentinel can do this obviously with a line by here and turret here and then maybe we do like a 2-2 with the silver dart long maybe we join short actually establishing some a control right this is like a very standard default on haven that's the macro that's the pre-round kind of just things to consider so pre-round that's step one step two is the mid round and the late round i kind of bunch them together just because the mid round and the late round can kind of be grouped into one if the goal of the pre-round is kind of set yourself up for a plan and hit weak side i think the mid round is adapting i have three notes for you guys tracking enemy players locations so that you can decide to rotate and push and i can kind of go into this a little bit more in battle plan again you're just trying to figure out what's going on the map and fishing out their their setup so let's say for example we do this a default and you see three people a just fighting a like there's two long one short a good call or a good response to that would just be mid rounding to go back to a b hit or mid rounding to go back to a c hit just because they have three a side All right that's the power of a default and that's kind of what you're pre-rounding so yeah the goal of the default is to kind of figure out their enemy setup maybe you get some map control maybe get some kills break some util trade util Hopefully that's simple enough. And then obviously in execute, you just, or in a rush, you just five man hit something, a fake, you throw someone in the site and then the rest of the team goes somewhere else. I'm just going to show this round because it starts with the pre-round on a mid B split. And then I'm just going to play it out and you guys will see what the mid, mid rounding thought process looks like. So I flash the B guy. I'm start, starting to walk towards B, but we don't actually get the B kill and we die. And then we get the trade. I'm like, okay, this is kind of awkward. We didn't get a clean B hit. I have the spike. Our cypher is lurked towards A main and not B main. So it feels a little bit better. Like we can turn this into like a fake almost. So I'm walking back towards in, A. In. I make the call. Smoke, smoke top mid just so uh, our teammates don't die. I heard that this guy rotated off of A and then we just double walk up. So you'll see this this A, a hit feels kind of free right like this sky is rotator i think this guy's a rotator and then our sky was able to take elbow for free because we made b pressure so objectively our mid rounding here is pretty good we were able to walk up a main for free we were able to take elbow for free and we were able to kill this guy because he was forcing himself on the site ISO spawn. ISO spawn. He might then i see the iso wall come out spawn so i can call it out. out and then i tp in the site and then lol that's the anchor right this guy was anchoring safe default he wasn't getting info and it was a pretty easy sight hit so yeah that's an example of what a mid round would look like obviously we tried to go for a mid to b didn't really look as good as it i wanted it to be we had a cypher outside a so we just regroup and hit a that's an example of the mid round and then kind of start thinking about late round like when should you take a fight in the post plant or maybe when should you take a fight in the mid round um and this is a general rule of thumb you just think about your numbers right so if you're up numbers you try to minimize the risk you take if you're down numbers let's say you're in a 3v4 or a 2v4 you're much more willing to make a play right and going back to this first clip that i had in the pre-round take a look at this post plant so uh, this is the first clip where uh we were doing that meant to be split off of the fade call so i'll show you guys the post plant specifically so i just got on site i just finished planning it's currently a 3v4 i know all of those positions because of the cypher bolt right i have flash out kind of waiting for my teammates contact when he gets contact on market i was gonna flash and switch 
Darkwing. But unfortunately, my Yoru died. So I was like, okay, it's a 2v4. But in a 3v4, I was going to be a little bit more patient, flash off of my Cypher's contact. But in a 2v4, I was just like, fuck it. Let me see if I can get a trade, get a kill, nothing. All right, so I forced the fight, get this one. And then now I'm fighting for front sight space, right? So I killed one market. I'm going to try to kill the second guy market. And that's why I'm just taking this fight. Get the kill. Teammate dies, 1v2. And then at this point, uh, this is just a bunch of micro stuff. Just uh, having good mechanics and being patient. And then I win the clutch. Hopefully you guys can see my thought process. In the 2v4, and we were getting pinched on the site, that's when I decided to use my open blind and take that fight. That's kind of like the macro for the mid round and the late round. There's another clip that I want to show you guys here of when to fight. Okay, so here's like a decision, right? This, there was a little bit of a pre-round here. We were doing a mid B, right? So I throw the wall from bottom mid to go into mid B. And then immediately as the round starts, it's a 4v5. I'm like, oh shit. I don't really want to go with the original plan in the sense that everyone's going to go elbow and I'm going to go elbow with them. I decided to kind of change up my idea and go be main to maybe get a kill here right so i'm just actively looking for fights here changing it up like it's not really a mid b anymore it's just a normal b execute get the trade on this guy okay and then no notice this post plant here right so this is going to be going into the late round right with the numbers game and when to take fights and then also a little bit into this micro bit with the gun duels and repositioning all that but we'll get into that in a second so the macro decision of what i see here is one it's a 3v3 and two i just killed one of the site players right i killed viper i know there's another one on site but i think i can get the bomb down so i need to get the bomb down because the longer i wait to plant the more our teammates are going to be in a pinch right so i'm just trying to rush the bomb plant i'm stuck so you throw the orb because obviously i need space Wait a little bit so I don't get spammed. And then I know I'm pretty much stuck here, right? Because there's this guy back site. I knew the Reynolds was back here. So this is where I decide to make the decision. I'm going to fight, right? It's a 3v3. The number games are even, but I'm in a disadvantageous position. So I'm going to go and take a duel. Have proper micros. Get my first kill. Trying to stay alive a little bit. And then I get my second kill, right? So I'm, I'm kind of just working the space I have. I know that if I just crouch default, it's not going to be a favorable situation for me. Maybe I'll get pinched from both sides. That's kind of the macro in the post plant. It's like, I didn't have space, one. And two, it was even numbers. And I knew I had to kind of make something happen. And then the last bit, the macro, which the gun duels aspect, like the how, like this is the how, right? If you go back to the first slide, the macro is like the why you do something. So why did I go for that fight in the post plant? Well, it's because it was a 3v3 and I don't have space. The micro is how, so it's like, that's how you peak things. And I covered most of this in the how to peaking video that I made before on stream. And that that's kind of like what covers gun duels, like kind of knowing what good angles are, what bad angles are, how to peak, all that stuff. Like that's the micro aspect of game sense. And then of course, positioning and repositioning uh, is, a separate thing with off angles positioning for utility repositioning to catch timings like this part here with the positioning and repositioning plays a big part and that's probably what most of you guys think of when you think of game sense how should i position how should i reposition what angle should i fight how should i position to use util like what is the type of rap play here i don't really have good examples for this but like if you look at any of my clutches i play pretty strong off angles and i play pretty strong positionings right so if you go back to this clip that we just watched here with the repositioning aspect i don't technically reposition position pillar but i want to show you guys how i take these duels right in terms of repositioning not from my position but how i take each side of the pillar so i peek left here right very carefully get one kill and i'm immediately go to swing right side so if i keep swinging left side i might over peek and die right that's kind of the idea when you reposition is you don't want to over swing and die or like over commit to one position so i swing right side see nothing go back hold my left teammates get contact and then I hunt for the third one, right? And there's there's so many examples, like I could go into this clip that I talked about the mid round before is a very good example of what repositioning looks like. So let me turn it down a little bit. I saw spawn, I saw spawn, he might be running out. Boom, TP, right, you guys saw this already. Get the kill. Okay, now take a look into the repositioning slash post plant, kind of just like everything here, right? I saw could be out on the left. So I'm playing out for my teammate. He kills my teammate, I swing, I get the trade, right? Most people would complete the, the fuse or the plant there. Then again, I go for the stick and then I use my smoke and then we're kind of just holding crossfire and then I'm ready to swing off my teammate. So this is kind of like, um, like just having good setups, good positioning, right? Like I get to play off of all my teammates from that default spot. This PowerPoint has the micro. Where, where do you position for off angles? 
where do you position the third utility and where do you reposition the get timings, right? That's kind of the idea of positioning. So I'll show you guys this clip of where I think I reposition really well for utility. So I stacked the round with a shock dart instead of a recon dart because if recon dart gets info, but I can get info by throwing a shock anyways, and we're not really actively fighting this. So I'm just looking for chip damage. Get a little shock, fall back. All right, this is the repositioning aspect. So I have the choice to now fight a short, play retake and play CT or heaven or fall back site and then kind of, you know, figure out things from there. So I decided to do a mixture, make a little bit of pressure a short, fall back site with the full charge dart out. So when they come up long, I can throw the dart. So I'm not playing retake here because I can see my teammates are flooding in and I'm repositioning for my util. This is like the second part of the, the micro, right? So just watch. He dashes in, I dart, kill one, kill two, easy. And this is my shit buy. Like I have a stinger, I force bot here. Reposition into the smoke, teammates fight long, whatever. And then I notice there's some downtime. So I then reposition again to use utility. You can see how repositioning is very important to use your util. Oh, you're just gonna get caught with the util in your hand. Um, I have a 1v5 um, clip. So 1v5s kind of showcase really good game sense in the micro, right? This is not a game sense in the idea of a macro gameplay. Like I'm outplaying them on the map. I'm outplaying them individually, right? So I'll show you guys what this looks like. It's a 1v5. I have a sheriff, hit the armor. So it's like a half buy. Get a free gun here. Okay, so at this point in the 1v4, I know that I have to reposition somewhat aggressively because like if I just stand here and take the duels, I'm most likely to get double swing and traded, right? So I decided to TP closer, see if I can take a duel. I hear them come up and I decided to use this little cool smoke tech that Wuhujin taught me. And I get a kill off of it. So now it's a 2v3, right? This is all micro stuff. I push the tempo again, TP on the box, see if I can hunt another kill. Don't get one. Use my util. And then now I'm just working the 1v3. I'm trying to isolate all my angles. The one way covers my right and jiggling it out. Just trying to peek each angle one by one. Kill this guy. And then I killed it. You guys might not have heard the step, but I would have went for this spray transfer even if I didn't hear the step because I knew the breach was there, which the cypher swings me. But I'll show you guys one more time. See the cypher step? Then I'm just sprinting. I'm 1 HP anyways. Grab the bomb. Ult away. Okay, so this 1v1 is like the idea of repositioning. So I plant open. It's always important to plant open. It's planted for market and I wanted to check my flank. So I decided to go B main to see if I could go and wrap to mid. Okay, I'll draw it up on Vala plant. Okay, so I planted like somewhere here. My play was to go all the way around to reposition to double up as clearing my flank and then also getting a late wrap on this guy if he came. That was my play. However, in the clip, as you guys will see in a second, after I made this play, I realized the market door was closed. I was like, oh fuck. Because I, I looked through B at the start of the round and I heard the door close. I'm so at this point, it's just a gamble. I'm like, oh, let me just hold my flank. He doesn't come flank. I decide to full clear it just to check, right? See nothing. And then now I just have to walk up at the bomb and just take a 50-50 of whether or not um, he's sticking. Try to do the falling smoke tech again, which in hindsight, I don't think I would have done it. But thankfully he's pretty low and, and that's that. So yeah, that's that's game sense, guys. Repositioning is really important, so you can use util. Obviously, I covered the peaking and stuff like that before, so mid-rounding, pre-rounding, late-rounding, that's kind of how I go through my thought processes. Does anyone have any questions? Is there situations where it's better to double swing same side? 100%. Just 3, 2, 1 if you know that guy's in the open. When you do a double swing, ideally, you catch the enemy in open, like in the open, so after he kills one, you can't like uh, reposition behind cover. Any advice on determining what a good position would be or just watch pros and control C and control V? I mean, you probably do just want to start with the pros positioning, control C and then control V. But good positioning kind of just means a spot where you can either throw utility utility to take a fight uh, or your position on an angle that's an off angle for you to get a free kill. You have, do you have advice on how to win more close range fights? I always panic in these situations. So gunfights with close range, I mean, that's kind of just being comfortable with spraying. It's okay to spray in close range, but yeah, that's that's a tough one, to be honest. I don't have like super specific advice for that bit. Would it be wise to default on pistol round with the intent now? Typically on pistol rounds, you either throw a fix or you rush. You don't have enough utility to default properly. Okay. I think that covers everything I wanted to cover for game sense. Just general stuff that I wish I knew when I started playing Valorant. Maybe it'll help some of you guys. Um, obviously, it's very generic surface level stuff, but hopefully the clips that I showed you guys kind of gave an insight of what it could look like. That is that. You can get a lot of insight on the micro side of things when you watch people multi-frag or, or in clutch situations. So like, look, if I just click on a random clip here, you can see a lot of micro stuff. I just click, I literally just click on a random clip on my, on my uh, folder. So uh, 
Obviously, I have dart, so I dart for the run out so I can get a safe plant. I have an op, so I'm going to go for an overheat kill because I'm the goat. Heaven, heaven. Here to step heaven. And yeah, that's, that's just a bunch of micro stuff. I knew the Sova was coming spawn because he threw shocks. So yeah, you can you can get a bunch of like re like little micro game sense stuff by watching pros and streams and just noting what they do. But the macro side of things, you have to think a little bit harder on. And I, I feel like most players actually do this part well, like the micro side of game sense, but they don't even know what's going on in the macro, if that makes sense. Whoops, yeah. Okay, that is that. That is that, that's the whole stream, that's the whole video.